Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 95. Hope, Hoping you guys are all do, doing well, everybody's home, staying safe. Um, I'm praying that none of this crap is uh, affecting any of you or anyone that you know. Um, same thing, man. Over here... Uh, Doing the same thing that I've been doing. <laughs> you know what's so crazy is that I would normally be doing this. Like, what I'm doing is my typical routine. The difference, however, is that I just the thought that I can't do anything else is what messes with me. And I, someone else had mentioned that also, and it was funny because I thought I was the only one. So I'm a self. I'm self isolated anyway. I like to be by myself trust me I don't like to be alone don't 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 get it twisted I don't like to be alone I like I like I don't like when my wife's not home you guys remember I did a podcast when she went to Florida I didn't like it <laughs> okay um but uh even if I spend hours upon hours in my office working creating or whatever the case may be I like the fact that if I want to see my wife I could go see her. If I want to see my granddaughter, I want to go see her. Uh, it's one of the issues that I have not seeing my kids, you know. Thank God for FaceTime and stuff like that, you know, and texting. So social media, once again, folks, you know, I preach about social media. I had somebody, um, so funny. I had someone, uh, a relative, actually a couple relatives who were, they're older than me by about, I'll say about 10 years maybe long, maybe 14 years, I would say. That's about right. Both pretty successful, pretty successful. Um, Very typical jobs. Um, And they had no concept of social media. They had, as far as they were concerned, it was a waste of time. They don't know why it even exists. When you ask if you have an account, they kind of give you that face like, yeah, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't do Facebook. I don't do those. I got too much time. I don't have time to be on there, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Um, there's a lot of things we don't have time to do, you know? There's, you know, we shouldn't have time to watch TV. We shouldn't have time to go for a walk we shouldn't have time to freaking soak in a bathtub you know we shouldn't have time to watch a game you know we shouldn't have time to play with the kids to have a cookout we shouldn't have time for any of that stuff but we do we make time for this stuff um social media now if you're sitting there and you're just kind of getting involved with the gossip. And that's cool too, it's entertainment. So that's the whole purpose of of social media, it's entertainment. So it's it's meant to entertain you, but, and it's cool. In marketing terms, we call them consumers. So if you're one who just scrolls through the internet, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or any place else, and, or even like TikTok and stuff like that, and maybe you post lightly, you really don't post a lot, uh, then you're considered a consumer. Not meaning that you buy anything, meaning you consume the information, whether it's entertainment or educational stuff. If you're a creator, though, then you're one who creates um, content for other people to either learn from or also enjoy. Now, a lot of times... Uh, 
we might post pictures of our family, our kids, or whatever the case, a graduation, a happy birthday. And that's cool. That's partial of entertainment. People like that. People like to see, you know, some people get jealous, but you know, I like to see kids graduate. They don't have to be my kids. I love to see when someone got married. You know, I'm, I'm looking at these things as though, wow, look, these people are starting their life. I love to see when a new baby has been born. You know, um, if there's a stranger that passed away, um, I always heart it. If I see it, I heart it. I can't pass it without hearting it. You know, um, I don't know the people, so I won't leave a comment or anything like that. But I'll heart it at least, you know. Um, I like when people, you know, uh, were successful, that something successful happened with them. Whether, you know, whether it's in the business got a deal or whatever the case I, I like to see this stuff you know and I'm glad that we all are fortunate enough to uh to participate with this but then you have creators uh, I consider myself a creator um I like to create content for people to enjoy some of my content is for people to learn or to be inspired so if you look at a lot of my older uh, Instagram posts right now I'm doing a lot of TikTok posts um, uh, cause I'm just sharing that. I'm really, really absorbing that platform. Uh, just another platform that I'm getting involved with. Um, but if you look at my old, uh, Instagram, uh, post, you'll notice that it was a lot of motivational quotes. And what was interesting with the motivational quotes is they were mine. So I didn't repost other people's quotes. These were quotes that I wrote. And then not only would I write them. Um, I'm okay with Photoshop and Illustrator, so I can actually create uh, the image. So if you look at the image, you will not find those images anywhere else. If you saw the image, um, it's altered somehow, whether it's the color, whether it's the background. If it's a picture of an old man walking and he was normally walking, you know, in a park, you know, I might change the park and make it him walking, you know, in a, in a mall. Oh, I might have him walking on the beach and then I might change colors. Not typical because I don't, I'm not an artist. I don't draw. So, and I'm not, I'm not out there taking the pictures. So I'll take images and I'll manipulate them uh, to express the quote that I'm trying to write. So, and so if you look into my Instagram, I, I, I advise a lot of you to check out my Instagram account and go like all the way down to like the bottom and check out some of those. And just keep in mind, that I created those. So I created, I wrote the quote, um, came up with the quote, the idea of the quote, um, and I also manipulated or really designed the image. So they're my images. You won't find them anywhere else. And I love doing that thing. Time consuming though, because I was doing one every single day. Now I do want to get back into that. Um, I have a lot of them. Uh, and I even have, um, I want to create a book of quotes that are just my books just my quotes uh, a book I have enough to do that uh, but I want to I want to create more uh, so I just have to um, get that back back on schedule you know so right now you know I'm trying to do and I'm trying to do a lot of daily stuff if you notice so I'm trying to do the daily TikToks which is challenging challenging especially if I if I do the long ones like I did today um, they're long to me because they're 30 seconds <laughs> so you guys watch them and you can hold your breath and watch the whole thing Trust me when I tell you, I think today's TikTok took me about three hours, maybe four. And you're probably saying, how the hell? Yes, it does. Um, just the way you have it. See, now, I can go and use, I have great camera equipment. I have great lighting. I have great editing programs in my computer. I could sit down and manipulate a lot of this stuff and then I can go and, and I can really do some really dope stuff and then I can upload it to TikTok okay and I'm not gonna put that past me like I will never do that um just the format has to be right it, it just requires a certain a certain way of doing it um so I don't mind doing that 
but that's not how I'm doing it now. So, and I'm doing it for a reason like this is because I'm really trying to master the platform of TikTok. So all my editing, everything from the camera shots uh, to the editing, to the effects, to the music, everything is done inside the TikTok uh, platform. So, and I'm doing that purposely uh, just to really, really get my that muscle really develop so I really know what I'm doing and believe me when I tell you it's it's not that easy it really isn't in fact let me tell you what happened today though the first hour and a half I spent creating the TikTok I forgot to do one thing the segment was a 60 second segment okay meaning that's that was the length of the video okay it was 60 seconds I accidentally had, no, I'm sorry, it was 30, 30 seconds, okay? TikTok, by default, sets your timer up for 15 seconds, okay? What you have to do, they give you two choices. They give you 15 seconds, they give you 60 seconds. If you're going to do something over 15 seconds, you have to change the time to 60 seconds because what's going to happen is when you get to 15 seconds, it's not gonna let you record anymore. And that's what happened to me. I still had enough, what, 15 seconds to go, and it stopped. And I already did a lot of work. I already, because I mentioned this last time, uh, those TikToks are not done like, I'm not, like today uh, I did the Book of Revelation. So, <clears throat> um, um, Revolution by Kirk Franklin. But, um, I didn't sit there and do like all the preacher's parts first and then go and do, you know, the DJ's parts second and then edit everything where they're supposed to go. No, I had to actually change my outfit and then change back. So I would do the preacher, take off the outfit and then put one of the, the churchgoers or whatever you call them. <laughs> all right. And then go back to the audience, the, the, the preacher outfit, you know, do that piece and then go back to the other church goer and then go back to the preacher and then go to the DJ you know so it, it was, it's pretty uh it's pretty tedious and it's a job and it's, it, it works and people say well why do you do that well a couple reasons number one I love doing them I have fun so um number two this is a great time for me to do them because it I don't want to sit there watching the news all day. I won't. I haven't even watched the news at all today, at all. Um, second of all, <clears throat> I get a lot of people that like them or comment them, and they tell me how they. And that's cool, man. That's cool. Um, and even if it's for 15, 30 seconds that I'm giving someone some sort of entertainment during this time, that's a great thing. That's beautiful. Um, also, um, it's content that I can hold on to. It's stuff that I can create, more stuff that just shows the different things that I can do. And, and it also opens me up to the fan base, the small fan base that I have for them to realize the type of person I am, you know. And that's what this podcast does also. When you listen to the podcast, you get to learn about me or know me at a different level. And this is important. I am a businessman. I am a businessman, but I'm not trying to sell what I have to sell to you guys. I'm not trying to sell that. I'm a booking agent, and unless you're a promoter, um, there's nothing I can sell you. Now, you might buy my books later on or whatever the case may be, um, but that's not something I have to put in your face. If people are interested in me, if they like the stuff that I do and they, they find it entertaining, then maybe they might want to pick up my books. Beautiful. I don't have to shove it down anyone's throat, and I don't need to uh, twist anybody's arm to get anything, you know? Um, and I want to build my fan base that way. I want to give. I want to give without anything in return. Like I said, I'm a booking agent. Unless you're a promoter, there's nothing you can really do for me. The books are not going to make me rich. You know? In fact, the books, the, the profit on the books are so tiny. Um, but they're just more documentation of me. It's more things that I can leave behind when it's time for me to say goodbye to this world. It's just more things, whether they're videos, whether they're audios, whether they're books, whether they're blogs, whatever the case, whether they're photo photos that I take. 
These are things I can leave that my kids can have access to and my grandkids can have access to. And maybe, maybe I'll inspire them or maybe I'll inspire somebody else. Just like so many people in this world have inspired me. People who have, oh, are not here anymore, as well as people who are here, still here, you know. These goes for celebrities to influencers to just normal everyday people. I've had my influences. I have people who have made a major impact in my life over the years, major. And a lot of them have no idea that they've done it, but they've made some pretty major impacts just by the way they roll, by the way they um, carry themselves. It might be something that they said, it might be something that I saw them do, and this goes so far back to, I remember seeing couples that were much older than I was. I'm talking about, I might have been 13, and they were grown-ups. They were probably, at that time, in their 30s, maybe even 40s, who knows? And I remember seeing couples that were pretty inspiring just the way, now I had no idea I had no idea back then that I didn't. I was just sitting there saying, oh, when I get married, I want to have a relationship like that. Nope. Nope. I never said that. But for some reason, there was a subliminal impact that these people made that when I got older and I ended up in relationships, all of a sudden they popped into my head. And I thought about them. I'm like, wow. Wow. Okay. All right, and, and I, I always sought that type of relationship, and I, I feel like I, I found that, you know? But they don't know anything about this. They have no idea. I don't even know where, if I can ever find them, you know? I'll give you another example. Very, very interesting. Um, for those who know, don't know, I'm Muslim. I'm converted Muslim. I've, I converted in 19... 19- 88, yeah, 1988, again, 88, famous number in my life, um, <clears throat> my name Latif was given to me, it was, a, it was a name that I always loved because I had a friend of mine that, whose name was Latif, and, um, and uh, it was a real cool dude, and I just liked the name, and I always said, man, you know, I always loved Islam, I always had a this thing with it but because of the fact that I was light skinned I was Puerto Rican I didn't know if there was a place for me I had a lot of learning to do this is very early early on uh, years later I learned that you know yeah Spain was a Muslim country for 870 years for those who don't know um, yes <laughs> it was um, but anyway okay and just for clarity, clarity yeah, all that bullshit you see about Muslims and Islam is that's false False information. Those are just sickos doing sicko shit. Just like sicko Christians and sicko Hindus and sicko everything. You know, Catholics, the sick sick people come in all shapes and sizes and every color and language and religion you can think of. So, all right, so get past that real quick. But, so check this out. When I was incarcerated, I was sick and tired of going in and out, in and out. I was tired of it. I was tired of the in and out of prison. I was always fascinated by religion, the history of it. I was always also, I was always had faith. I had been talking to God for as long as I can remember. Um, I was a baptized of a Catholic by my mom. I didn't make confirmation communion. I don't know why, but I didn't. Um, when I was incarcerated, what I did is I put, you know, I wanted to get out of my cell. I had a single cell. This is one of the first bids. This is like wave. No, this would be my last bid because once I became Muslim, I never went back to prison. So before that, I in and out, in and out. I'm talking about this time. Now, this time I was in a cell. This was at the Queen's House of Detention in New York City. Okay. And I wanted to get out of the cell. So, they, of course, we have rec, which was like one hour every single day. Um, you could go to the gym or you could go outside. 
Other than that, you worked or you stayed in the dorm. There really wasn't much. But what they did have is they had programs. So they had, um, if you want to take a skill, if you want to go to college, which I did all those things too. But one thing that they had a lot of, religious services. They had Catholic services. Um, Protestant services, Christian services, Muslim services, uh, Jewish services. Uh, man, I, I don't know. I don't remember what else. But you, but those services that I just mentioned, I went to all of them. And I went to them with my first intention was to get the hell out of my cell. And those were usually, I think they ran like two hours. You know, and sometimes they'll be like back to back. So you'll have, because they all went to the same. And usually it was like in the, in the lunchroom or cafeteria or it'd be a, like a classroom almost that they had. And that would be where you had your services. And um, and I remember sometimes you'll have back to back. So I come back from Catholic services and all of a sudden they'll say, Christian services. I'm like, grab my Bible. Hey, Christian, open up cell number, whatever. <laughs> Forgot my cell number. <laughs> and, and, um, and I would go to Christian services. But what happened during this course is really, really great speakers, because they used to get outside speakers. They used to come in and talk to the inmates. And these speakers used to come in. And let me tell you something, man. They were great speakers. I was always fascinated by speakers, people who can. It was always one of my things. I always wanted to be a speaker. I might speak now on the podcast. And you guys heard the beginning podcast. That's me on stage. So I'm, I'm scared. I'm terrified. But it is a big goal, a big dream that I have that maybe one day. I've tried it. I didn't do too well, though. But, um, um, but these people really, really moved me. And it got me to the point where it made me interested in what they were teaching me. And I started to learn. I started to take a lot of the materials that they would give and so on. And then... Um, I remember they used to also give us rosaries. So I remember the Catholic services they gave. So if you notice people, especially in, I don't know anywhere else, but in New York, you'll see a lot of inmates, you know, a lot of ex-cons that come out of prison. A lot of times they have a rosary around their neck. It'll be like a green and white rosary. Those were the no, those were the colors I remember having, the green and white ones. They were just beads with a plastic cross. And you would wear it around your neck, and that was like the thing. It was like that was like the hip thing, you know. So you wore your rosary, you're kind of cool. And um and, and <clears throat> I remember because the mailman that used to deliver the mail, his name was um, Sharif. And just so you guys know, the word Sharif means like man of law, like the man of like a like a that's where you get the word sheriff. So we see the sheriff. It's actually an Arabic word. Sharif. So when you see somebody's called Sharif, it's it's an it's an attribute of God of Allah. So anyway, so Sharif was a really really cool brother, black dude, small guy, bald, but he looked like the epitome of health. Like he wasn't diesel, but he looked very very healthy. And he wore his uniform, his seal uniform, and he wore his white kufi, you know, which is you know the little. The beanies, the little hats that the Muslims wear, okay? And he was bald-headed. I remember he had these round wire glasses, real thin mustache. Um, real, you know, wasn't that dark like a you know, brown-skinned dude? And he was cool because he would come and deliver the mail. He'll call your name. And you come up to the gate. So we live, you know, we had the cells, but then he came. There was a middle section where he can have access to all the sections, all the all the sides. So he'll call your name, or when you know the mail's coming, you kind of you kind of crowd around him, not too far, not too close, because he'll tell you back up, and then he'll call your name. You step up, you get your mail. But what was cool about Sharif is he spoke to everybody. He didn't just give you your mail. He knew you guys, and he remembered everybody's name, and he would greet you by, hey, hey, you know, Eric. How you doing? How's everything? You doing okay? You good? And I remember one time somebody sent me cash, and that's contraband. You get a lot of trouble for that, even if they send it to you. And I remember he has to open your mail in front of you. So he will open it, and while he's talking to you, he just takes it. He doesn't read it. He just opens it, makes sure no no marijuana pops out. I remember one time a $20 bill was in there, and he said, oh. I said, oh. I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't know they sent that. 
He goes, don't worry, man. He goes, I'll put it in your account. And he did. He put it in my account. So he could have got me in trouble, and he didn't, you know. Um, but I'm going to tell you what, what moves me with this guy. And he plays a huge role in why I became Muslim. Now, I always thought in my mind, Muslims didn't believe in Jesus, and Muslims was anti-Christ, and they didn't believe in God. Man, I had all this craziness going through my head, just like a lot of people do. They just don't know. They don't understand. So I remember one time I'm standing there and I had my rosary on and I'm talking to Sharif and he's going through my mail. I used to get pretty decent mail, amount of mail. And we're talking and I remember him reaching through the bars while we're talking in the middle of the car, like he's talking to me. And as he's talking, he reaches through the bars and he takes hold of my rosary, the cross part. Now, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, Yo, is this school dude going to like pull it and all the beads are going to fall? But he didn't. You know what he did? He turned it around. Because the little Jesus guy on it was facing my chest. So he took it. So he took it. So he took it and he he flipped it. He flipped it around, you know, and um, and he put it right. And he just continued and he just continued talking to me. So, but anyway, um, but anyway, so, sorry guys, I got a little disrupt, the angel was calling me, but, um, and, and that made a huge, a major, major impact on me, and, um, and Sharif never knew this, now, now this is what's so crazy, I'm gonna tell you something that was so crazy, when I finally came home, right, I used to go to the mosque on 96th Street. I forgot where that was. It's 2nd Avenue. I forgot, but it was a beautiful mosque in Manhattan, brand new. And I remember I was there and it was just crazy. I saw Sharif. Now, Sharif never knew that I became Muslim because this was in the city jail in Queens House. Sharif, I didn't turn Muslim until I went upstate. So I did about 18 months in the city jail, and then I went upstate, did the other 18 months, something like that. So he never knew this. I never told him. I never told him I had intentions. I never showed any kind of interest, nothing. But then I'm at the mosque on 96th Street, and I get up, and I'm walking out. I was there by myself, and I, could, I recognize him from the side. He's sitting down. He's just sitting there reading. I said, oh, my goodness. So now this, remember, this is almost two years later, maybe more, because I did that 18 months of state plus, I was already home for a little while. And I went up to him and I knelt down, you know, beside him, because he was sitting on the floor. And I said, Asalaamu Alaikum. And he turned to me, he goes, Wa Alaikum Asalaam. He shook my hand. I said, do you recognize me? And he's staring at me, he's like, no, brother. He goes, I, I, I don't, I don't. And I told him my name. I told him where I was. Listen, we used to even work out in the gym. He used to come up to the gym and we used to work out. I remember I stopped eating meat also for him. I, I didn't eat meat for like almost 12 years. And I remember because he was working out with me and he wasn't sweating and he was getting down. I was like, man, I said, you don't sweat here. And I remember him saying, I don't eat meat. And that, you know, it plays a role with the, with the, and I remember, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe he doesn't have all the facts. I don't know. But I remember that being a thing. And I'm not saying that that was the reason I stopped eating meat, but I always remembered this. That's another thing that he told me. But anyway, so I go to him and I, I, and you know, and we're shaking hands and he's looking at me and you can tell that he really wants to recognize who I am. And he didn't know who I was. And it was so crazy because I carried this dude, not just in my, in my mind, but in my heart for a very long time. Like this dude played a huge role in changing my entire life. Not saying that he changed it, but he made me see Islam in a whole totally different way like this was 
this, the way this dude was was the way I wanted to be. You know, now I didn't have a father growing up. You know how people say, I want to grow up to be just like my father. I didn't have that. But if I did, maybe this is how I probably would have wanted my father to be. So it was really, really interesting, interesting uh, situation. And um, just wanted to share that with you guys. I don't, I don't know if that was going anywhere, but uh, interesting story. And I haven't thought about it in a while. But um, no, I didn't tell him anything about about that situation. Um, I think I was more shocked the fact that he didn't know who I was. You know, it, you know what? It was almost like you're carrying this guy in your mind and in your heart for all these years. Like, he's, he's family. Like, you love the dude, man. You, like, love him, man. And, and he doesn't know who you are. It's almost like a close relative with amnesia, you know, who just doesn't remember who you are. And... But it's, it's okay, you know? Anyway, guys, I, listen, I went over my 20 minutes, but I wanted to tell you that story. I appreciate you hanging in there and listening. So. But listen, um, be cool. Stay safe. Try to stay home, please. Uh, get outside. Go outside your house if you can, if you don't got crowds. Get some air. Get some fresh air. And um, try to take care of yourself. Eat right, okay? And uh, God bless. Until tomorrow. Good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.